Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Inside the Factory. So far these factory tours have been smaller manufacturers or um, you know a lot of brands that we do ourselves. However today I'm breaking out the big guns and we are going to show you the people who invented mass manufacturing for acoustic guitars. So this is a Taylor factory tour. Oh yes, we are doing the full Taylor tour. <laughs> so, um, you know, for the most part, acoustic guitars have been small, hands-on manufacturing, and then Taylor came around and kind of invented a load of big machines to do it for them. So um, this is really interesting, um, and you'll see an awful lot of really big tooling, big gear, big storage units, I mean, the factory is just massive. So let's dive straight into it. <laughs> straight off the bat, you get the conveyor. You see how big that conveyor is? So they get sprayed, they get put on this conveyor, and basically that takes them from one sector to the next along the finishing line. You may think that ebony is black, but it's not, it is stained. So this is what this woman's doing here, she's taking a good chunk of ebony, and dipping it into black stain, leaving it there and then putting it out to dry. Not all ebony is completely black people, you get black grade stuff for sure, but... So these are wood storage containers which control the humidity, the heat and age the wood. You can see how much wood storage they actually have. It is huge, it's absolutely phenomenally massive. So all of these are fingerboards, top plates, back plates, all cut down. Now this is laminate. You see how it folds? It's as thin as paper. Absolutely super, super thin. So that will get glued together in layers and uh, used to make laminate back and sides, um, headstock veneers. So these tools are a tailor design. Um, so it's, it's basically a wagon wheel, you can see what he's doing here very clearly. You get two back sets in, goes under the clamps, or I just said mahogany tops, so this is, these are top sets. <coughs> and then he clamps them both down and sideways and then will spin the wheel around and load in another set. Um, so in theory, you can, when you've completed the wheel, you can start taking them out of the clamp. Um, it goes pretty quick in there. Mahogany tops, which you're all seeing C cut. So this is a big paper cutter. You can see the blade coming down. And it cuts the laminates for them. So yes, it is just like a... Um, big newspaper manufacturer, they have big paper slicers, um, you can see that the laminates are as thick as paper, um, pretty much. So what they're doing here is creating the laminates, so that's a, a spray adhesive, I believe that's a spray adhesive, although I should put it the different side, yeah it's a spray adhesive, yeah. So there's a there's a core of softer wood. They don't use very good core material. I've put, installed a lot of um, pickups and stuff into tailors, and the core material is pretty soft. It's like a pine type thing. Um, it could also be another high pressure laminate of just soft wood with two mahogany bits on the back. And this press that she's putting it in now actually presses a curve into the backs. So if you see one with like a curved back to it, then they've been through that press. So it's a, uh, you know, a bit of mahogany that they can chop super, super paper thin to stretch out the material as much as possible and then sandwich that in between with a, with a centre layer of some soft 
material that's a tenth of the price. Um, so it really does stretch out the not only the price but the, the good material and um, it all gets glued together and put under a hydraulic press. Um, this is the side bending jig so they're gluing the sides in. You can see it's got the Taylor logo in it because it is a Taylor product. It's a Taylor design product. So this not only glues the side sets but also heats them up. Um, so when they're cooled down the glue would have cured and they would stay in the shape like you're saying here. It's funny, they glue two side sets together and then cut them down the middle to then book match side sets. Just like I said, yeah, it's not the most efficient process. Um, I could imagine you get quite a few failures if you don't cut it right. Makes it nicely book match though. So you can see how thin these laminates are. So that looks like Hawaiian koa. Poor ladies, those <laughs> things that they're wearing make them look like lunch ladies. <laughs> Sticking on the stickers before they've glued the thing together. Yeah, that's interesting. Is that like a? Looks like um. I need to check that inside a tailor. Actually, they they've been stamped with something there. Let's pull up the fine scroll. On. See, they've got a little stamp down the bottom side. Wonder if that's a QR code. <laughs> So these are all bolts on necks again, as we've seen in the past. Two bolts through the heel and through the neck, two Allen key bolts. Makes it nice and easy to work on. It's nice to see that they're actually still doing a lot of the inlay by hand. Um, okay, that's one way of using a set of pliers. <laughs> I mean, there isn't really a machine that can do this kind of work. Um, you get tools which do the same as a load of tape wrapped around your fingers. <laughs> tools with a bit of leather on them that you can use to push in the, uh, the inlay. So this is the vacuum bladder or vacuum press for the side um, for the this is the top bracing sorry and you can see the acrylic template there so you know she doesn't really need to think about it she just grabs X brace out of the bucket whacks some glue on it um, and then puts it into the um, the acrylic template there puts the bridge plate in puts another side brace in such as one fan side brace or are there going to be more there's definitely a space left on the acrylic down the bottom there. No. So a lot of companies have more than one down there. You can see there's just underneath the bridge plate there's one brace going across. Generally you'd see two. It's like a standard. So I guess that saves some money on a lot of material there could mean that your top could warp at some point there. So it's glu gluing on the end block and the neck block. Um, one stage to complete on the side. See they're splaying up the sides into um, a, a type of mould. Oh no, poor guy's glued it, to the <laughs> glued it to the board for the video. Oh, there we go. You see again that the end block is tiny, tiny, tiny. Super thin. You know, most of the time that would be like th three times thicker, maybe even more. And the neck blocks are just a bit of plywood 
um, or like the, where it goes underneath the fingerboard is just a bit of plywood. Yeah, you can see it's it's just laminated ply. I don't know what price point these models are at, but if they're more than like four or five hundred quid, I'd, I'd be pretty surprised. It doesn't look like it's going to be much more than that. This is gluing the lining on. Um, this is not kerfing, this is lining. Um, it's also made of plywood. It's just one strip of wood that goes all the way around. Um, kerfing is uh, like a bit of solid mahogany that they put loads of chop marks in to make it bend. Whereas plywood, like a birch ply, you can bend it to, to your will pretty much. So he's cutting out where the bracing is going to be um, and the top he's got a tiny bit of kerfing there to hold the bracing. Wow, there's no lining on that whatsoever. This this mould is also beautiful, it's another tailor design product. Um, so they can put that in a mould and, and yeah, really glue that box together. Well, two little strips of kerfing and that's it. Wow. There's not going to be much structural rigidity on that, that top and back set there. I was doing both sides. Cool, you've got to work quickly mate. How are you going to get your clamp out? I'll take it out now. <laughs> no? Come on, take your clamp out. Wait, what? <laughs> okay, I hope you can get the clamp out. This is another Taylor design product. Um, so we've got the steel plate, got a wooden plate, and uh, this big big spinning wheel which can put it all under pressure um, and glue the top and, and the back together and it's also on a wagon wheel so many of these tools are on these wagon wheels so the guys can just keep on working all day long they never need to stop so the CNC machine for the necks they basically use what's called CAD, program in a shape, um, put billets into a CNC machine, and it's like a drill on a X and Y axis that can carve material out for them. So they're glued on the fingerboard, truss rod would be in it as well. You don't want to be gluing on a fingerboard without the truss rod in it. <laughs> What, you're installing nuts now? Apparently so. They are installing nuts now. And frets. Well, the headstock's not even shaped. This is an interesting way of doing it. So again, the frets go in dry, there's no glue there. All the frets are pre-cut to their determined lengths. Each pot will be numbered for the fret um, that he's using there. And then he just puts one side in gently. And is this going to be a hydraulic press? Just get some finger tight. Check. Yeah, the... Oh, no! This is the individual press. So... Okay, this is the Mexican factory, the China factory, we've got to cover at some point as well. Because they got big hydraulic fret presses. They're quite cool to see, but a lot can go wrong with them as well. You can see the necks, the headstock's been shaped now. But this is like a churn and burn factory, you know, you've got one person drilling the holes, you've got one person putting the nuts on, one person gluing bodies in and they just do that all day, all day, non-stop. 
So I mean, it's just uh, it becomes just a job, you know. There's one bolt in those nuts. Going for it. So, standing station, they get everything sanded down um, to like a, a stage where they can start applying finish. Generally, about 600 to 800 grit. Here you see guitars which have got finish on, which are ready to be knocked back and buffed out. Makes me think of a dry cleaner every time I see guitar bodies hanging up like that. <laughs> but legit, like everyone's on their station and then they just do that all day long. See, one bolt for the next. Two bolts stops it spinning. You know, but one bolt, it can just... I guess you've got the fingerboard on, so you're not going to get a huge amount of that. But... So this looks like um, an oil finishing station. They've got like um, a, a waxed oil there. And they, they will apply that quite liberally. Let that dry, buff it out. see they've taped over where the bridges will be so that the oil and wax doesn't penetrate there. If you get oil and wax on that then they're never going to glue down properly. Spray finish. It's probably checking the consistency of that finish. Uh, these might be UV machines as well. Helps cure it. Might be a UV cured finish. Bit of sanding through the finishing process. Scraping binding. I mean, again, that's one job that you can get a machine to do it, but it's never as good or as accurate. Doing it by hand with a nice sharp Stanley knife is the way to go. And the woods look beautiful, but we've seen that it's made from paper. The tops aren't, but the back and sides are pretty much made from paper. You can see that join, you know, they've not got any binding there, um, that all of those are laminate models. Yeah, you know, beautiful wood, but it's still, it's still just a laminate instrument. Binding can hide it. And then they go on the big conveyor. <laughs> All of these need curing time. You know, so they get put on a conveyor, it gets sent around the factory, and um, gets time time for it to cure properly. But it is like a massive, massive dry cleaner. It's, it's quite incredible. So this is the buffing station. Got all the buffing wheels going. <laughs> Man's doing trick shots for the camera. <laughs> See, it's funny, in the Larivee factory and the Breedlove factory, they actually had better dust, dust extraction than Taylor do. Which is funny, because I would expect Taylor to have like some of the biggest and best gear out there. But yeah, Mexico has different regulations than America, so, you know, things like, you know, when they were spraying the glue, they weren't wearing masks. Um, when they're using the dust extractors, they're not wearing masks, whereas in America, you need to be masked up for all of that kind of stuff. It doesn't follow the safety regulations there. So there we have it. That's a tour of the Taylor factory um, in Mexico. Uh, this is a bit of a quicker video. 
I, I haven't paused it so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can see, I, I, hopefully I can find a China video because the Chinese factory is even more intense. But the Mexican factory outputs about 750 guitars a day. And you can see compared to our other ones that we've done, it's just a whole other level altogether. Um, lots of Lots of people huge amount of people, each has their own dedicated station, they're just churning and burning through the jobs all, d all the time, every day, um, whereas like, say the Breed Love Tour for instance, there's a f smaller amount of people that do end up doing more jobs, so in my opinion, the less people you have and the more jobs they do, the more quality control you'll get across the whole product, whereas this, you know, they do do quality control, um, of course they do, but uh, you, you're, if you just get one person sanding, one person drilling, this, that, that, then quality control has to be a separate station all in itself. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a completely different way of doing it. You can see that, you know, Taylor's really the ones that pioneered the mass manufacturing side of this business um, from for acoustic guitars and how much it really shows um, with the, the tooling that they've designed and um with with their end products so yeah i hope you enjoyed this this little video um i will be doing some more hopefully i can find a taylor china factory tour because i'm sure that's going to be even more intense but um I, i'll cover a few more i, I want to do the corex factory and corex they produce about a million guitars a year so you can see some really really high output stuff compared to uh the the ones that we're dealing with um, I like dealing with smaller manufacturers. I feel like their products are better and there's just a bit more passion throughout the whole process than a lot of these mass manufactured instruments. Anyhow, I will leave it there today. A bit shorter video, that's how I want it to be. And um, I will see you in the next in the next one. Like, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. And uh, yeah, see you later guys.